You know what's happening, guys, right? Because I recently went to the movies at a children's birthday party, and when this trailer came on, a lot of children lost it. It was like, I was like, whoa. I mean, I made Olaf after all. I felt like he was the star, but apparently it's Elsa. So I'm gonna cake Elsa. I'm just gonna apologize for the way I treated Elsa in this video. No dolls were harmed in the making of this cake. To make Elsa, I baked 10 pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake in four round pans in consecutive sizes. Now I'm gonna layer each cake into two layers for a total of eight layers of cake. And Sir Squeeze is here to help me simple syrup all eight layers of cake. Now, before I fill and stack this cake, I need to create a secret chamber. But this secret chamber is not gonna house sprinkles or candy. It's going to house a doll's legs. <laughs> So I'm building a secret chamber for plastic legs. I don't want the chamber to be directly in the middle of the cake. I want Elsa's dress to mainly be big behind. You know what was so weird? The doll that we got, the legs of the doll are blue. Like she's really frozen. Elsa has hypothermia. Everything's good. I'm going to unstack my cakes and now I'm going to fill them and restack them with Italian meringue buttercream. Clean out the inside of the chamber if you need to with a small spatula and continue all the way up the cake. At this point, I want to chill the cake just to firm up the buttercream before I begin carving. Now I'm going to begin to carve the skirt. I'm just gonna carve until I'm happy. And I try to do it symmetrically, so I'll make the front cut first and then cut either side. Like I keep going back and forth instead of just going clockwise and realizing it doesn't look as even as I thought. It's easier to start in the cent the front center and then, you know, do each side. <laughs> that looks like a really bad robot dance. I'm carving cakes. So I carved it, but, and I will say carve until happy. I carved, but I wasn't happy. I just, I feel this dress needs to be more. She's Elsa. You know what I'm saying? She's not Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> She's not Snow White. Snow White was like in her little garden with her. Elsa's like, she's in a ice palace for heaven's sakes. She's gotta wear, she's gotta dress like she lives in an ice palace. That's all I'm saying. So this is where my fourth cake comes in handy. It's the biggest round cake that I have. I'm gonna remove it from my pant and then I'm going to use it to sort of cut. I'm gonna cut like half moon shapes and build up steps along the back of the cake. Once I'm happy with the shape of the cakes, I'm going to simple syrup them quickly and then build it up right against the back of Elsa with Italian meringue butter. I will chill the cake again to give it a chance to firm up and then I'll just continue carving the skirt. So it's more, there's definitely like more body at the back of the skirt and I want it to come sort of to a point. Now I'm happy. So it's time to crumb coat and chill the skirt with Italian meringue. Now that the crumb coat has chilled, I can ice Elsa again, nice and smooth before I start to apply fondant. There's something else I wanna do before I apply fondant. I remembered that I had this platter that kind of looks like a snowflake on the edges. So I'm gonna use that platter upside down and put Elsa on it. And then I'm going to add Elsa. No, I didn't add Elsa, I like Before I start to cover this cake, I just wanna see that Elsa looks good in this skirt. So you, as you can see, I've undressed her. Her arms and her hair are tied up with an elastic band. It's like I've captured Elsa. I am the villain in the new Frozen movie. Are we allowed to talk about it? I'm not really in the trailer that much. Um, yeah. So I put her inside and she's a little short. Thank goodness I saved my little secret chamber circles of cake. And I need, it's like, it's like a little cake cork. So I'm gonna- It's a cake pedestal, it's, a cake tool. Yes, but within the dress. Squash it down and now I check Elsa and she looks good. In, it's like she's wearing high heels under the dress. Yes. Right, like six inch heels. It's time to design Elsa's gown. But before I do, I wanna remind you, if you're an aspiring baker, if you've been watching my videos and wanting to learn, 
I am hosting a holiday baking live stream and it's the perfect time to do that. You can bake with me live in real time on December 14th in the comfort of your own kitchen. My holiday baking live stream will be held on Facebook and we will be baking a giant chocolate chip cookie cake, adorable reindeer cupcakes and edible gifts. So there's something for all levels and it's all delicious. This is the final 24 hours to register for a full day of baking with me in your own kitchen. I hope you'll join me. There's a link below. Oh, and now back to designing my gown. The theme is frozen. So I'm beginning with white fondant. I want her gown to sort of have, look like it has an opening, almost like she's wearing like a more white fitted skirt underneath and then the rest is sort of bigger. First place I want to apply it is right down along the front of the skirt and I'm going to cut it sort of on an angle and then place it exactly center on the skirt. Why am I doing this? Uh, there's footage of me really doing this. For this part of the dress, I am going to trim the fondant away right at the base of the cake. Now I'm going to roll out some more white fondant and this time I'm going to create two white strips to go on either side of the one we've already placed. And before I place these, I'm gonna flip them over and fold in either long side of the fondant. And this just helps give it sort of movement like it's fabric. These two folded panels that I just added they're now sort of draping down over the sides of my platter. So I'm going to continue using this method of creating panels of fondant and gluing it to the cake. And just like I carved, I'm always gonna do it symmetrically. I find that when I'm trying to make fondant like an icy blue, even if you use the lightest blue food coloring in fondant, I still find it sort of sometimes on the bright side. So in order to make it look icier, you definitely want to use way more white fondant and just a bit of blue food coloring. But I also like to add a little bit of purple food coloring because it changes the tone of the blue. You definitely want a cooler blue more than a warmer blue. I'm starting with the lighter one, creating more of these A-shaped panels, folding the side, piping gel, on the back and then just placing them side to side. And at the bottom, I'm trimming them, like all the layers of her dress are just falling. Once I'm done with that lighter shade of blue, I move on to the slightly darker shade and I continue around the back of the dress. And the final panel of fondant that you add will be right at the back of the dress, like right in the center of her back on top and you want it to be pinched really thin at the top it's the thinnest panel on the dress. For this, I actually went back to using the lighter blue. I just wanted to see a different tone. I think I'm gonna put Elsa inside. This is gonna really help me see the shape of the dress before I do. Uh, I need to wrap her legs in plastic. This is what people do to wear couture. Do you know what women do to wear couture? I don't, I've never done it, but I hear when it's like the Grammys and the Golden Globes and the Oscars, right? They're doing all kinds of things. I don't think she's the first diva to wrap her legs in plastic. Probably not. I don't. <laughs> and now I can insert Elsa. Okay, Elsa looks good in this. Well, technically right now it's just a skirt. We need to make it a dress. I'm gonna roll out my white fondant nice and thin. I am gonna use the frill cutter. I'm going to cut along the top of this white fondant band and then wrap it around her torso. And it kind of looks like she has like a sweetheart neck because of the shape of the cutter I used. So I just want you to know a little behind the scenes, I did apply piping gel to her torso mm -hmm. in order for the bustier to fit. This is a private moment between, you know, a queen and her designer. That's very behind the scenes. Um, and I'm just gonna place this boost, this beautiful sweetheart white bustier around Elsa. Awkward things happen in a fitting. You know that those women who go to the Oscars and stuff, they wear all kinds of like adhesive tape to keep those dresses on. This is the, equiv the cake equivalent of that. So Elsa, uh, because she's a princess of like the cold, she wears like a long sleeve gown which I really like, but is harder to make out of fondant. So I was like, can't she just wear like a cap sleeve? 
it's okay. It's okay, I can work with this. I won't be a difficult designer. I roll out some of my light blue fondant, nice and thin, and then I cut it into two panels. Now I need to cover, how do I say this? Her, her top sort of opens like a V. It's like a deep V and then it's long sleeves. So I'm gonna use each panel and drape it over one shoulder and then down the front and back of Elsa, like ending in the middle, okay? And now I need to very carefully smooth this on to Elsa and I need to carefully cut the fondant that is between her side and her arm and then smooth that fondant underneath her arm like a sleeve. I want to trim the extra fondant that meets her hands. It was a little more like Maleficent, like it was hanging over at this point. So I just trimmed that fondant into like a nice V. Feels very princessy. Well, at least the Elsa doll that I have, it seems like at the bottom of her dress, it's quite like, I don't want to say purple, but indigo-y. So I've decided to paint some of the panels on her dress at the bottom with a little bit of purple food coloring. I mixed together purple food coloring and white pearl dust with a little bit of clear food grade alcohol. So I brushed it on almost halfway up and sort of coming to a point within each panel. I only did this on the blue panels. And the key here is to really blend the colors. So I'm just gonna brush sort of in one direction every time and I'm sort of removing the paint. And I just did this until it looked good. And then remember that final panel we added right at the back of Elsa? I'm gonna paint that whole panel purple. I thought this was a good idea. I thought it would look nice and it did, but it took the longest to paint because you have to be very careful that you're not dragging the paint onto the other panels. Yeah, so just paint, 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 blend, 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 and then blend. Did you blend? I blended. I wanted to embellish her dress further. Again, she's a queen going to a ball. It means a lot to this designer. Like if, if once Elsa wears my dress, one of our sprinkle medleys this month is called Flurries. And it's basically a bottle of iridescent snowflakes that you can eat. Well, you can eat snowflakes for real, too. They still taste very good. No, I mean, they taste like water. You love water. I'm surprised you said that. I'm surprised you're not outside like, this is delicious. <laughs> so I have these snowflakes and I just selected uh, the white ones and I'm going to I just I always feel the need to line things up So I decided to make lines of Snowflakes at the bottom of all the blue panels on her dress and I just glued them on with piping gel I added some snowflakes on her shoulders I added one right at the center where her top like at the center of her skirt right here You know you can do anything if you're designing Elsa's dress. This is what I chose to do she called me. She went out that night and everyone was like, Elsa, who are you wearing? And she was like, oh, Yolanda. <laughs> we can't show you that footage though, it's exclusive. <laughs> Not even TMZ has that. Exactly. <laughs> Not even TMZ. Elsa, behind the cold. <laughs> you know how they always do these things with princesses, right? Yeah. Like, like years and years from now. <laughs> While the paint is drying, I'm going to take some white gum paste, roll it out very, very thin, and I'm going to cut out some snowflakes. I have a set of snowflake plunger cutters. I love them, but I only use them at this time of year. They were a little like, I had to dust them off. Dust them off, sorry. My snowflake plunger oh. cutters. Um, so I'm gonna cut out three different sizes of snowflakes. Now I'm gonna take these snowflakes and I'm gonna cut some of them in half and I'm going to use them to embellish her waist. So where the, all the fondant from her torso meets the top of the skirt, I'm basically going to add detail that looks like, it looks like, did you say it reminded you of a doily? Was it? Yeah. It's like a doily. It's like it's kind of like lacy, but I love that it's a snowflake because it's Elsa. And I'm just gonna use different sizes and glue them around her waist. She had these drapes, these like organza drapes coming out. Even though I could make this out of really thin gum paste, it would never give that sh fully sheer illusion. So what I used is some tool. It says, I'm frozen. Elsa is ready for the ball, and I think she needs to let her hair. 
Now, before I let Elsa's hair down and show you the final design, I really need you to subscribe to this channel. In fact, Elsa wants you to subscribe to this channel. Elsa has subscribed, obviously. Actually, once she subscribed, that's when all the buzz started. People were like, I think you'll have to make your dress frozen. If you want to see more awesome novelty cakes, click here and here. In case my doll dress design career doesn't take off, I can still come back here every Tuesday and make cakes.